Good afternoon, everybody. This is Hunter Mazingo, Associate Portfolio Manager and Research Analyst for Revere Asset Management, bringing you your Daily Market Insight video here on Tuesday, uh, July 5th, almost 15 minutes after market close here in Jacksonville, Florida, 4.13 p.m. Eastern Time to be exact. And man, did we have another doozy of a day in the markets. We've got big moves in interest rates to talk about. We've got big moves in the dollar to talk about. But more specifically, we've got major relative strength from growth stocks today, a positive reversal uh, led by growth slash technology. And we're going to take a look at, I'd say, five or six of the best looking growth stock charts out there. Some of the names that have the best volume patterns, the best price action, all of that good stuff. We're going to get into it here in just a moment. Uh, so let's talk about it. What just happened? Like I said, positive reversal. We saw a nasty gap down. Uh, this morning, the S&P was down around 2%, Q's down around the same, uh, but we saw technology and growth kind of start to show strength and that continued throughout the day. So like I said there, major strength from growth and we saw oil and commodity stocks slash ETFs get crushed today. A lot of oil uh, names having a hard, hard day today. A lot of names down five, six, seven, eight percent uh, A lot of commodity related names like coal names and fertilizer names also having a tough day. So we're going to get into all that. Performance wise, as you can see, led by the risk on uh, part of the market. G6 up nearly 2%. Q's up also nearly 2%. The S&P up 16 basis points there. The Dow and mid caps, both laggards. We talked about it a little bit last week in my videos. Mid caps have been weak since the uh, low that was put in about two or three weeks ago. That continued today. So the Dow down 0.42, mid caps down 0.13. Russell 2000 green on the day up 0 0.8 or 0 0.79, excuse me, 60-40 down 0 0.36 and grow was down 0 0.15 today. So no changes to market state. That's still in correction, even though we had this positive action today, looking for more confirmation, continued uh, confirmation of, of the kind of good price action we saw today before you would see any type of change there. However, we do have a very minor change on the market leaders, as you can see here, this little green arrow has been moved a little more towards neutral uh, as we see some leadership starting to emerge, some stocks uh, showing some big time relative strength, diverging from the indices, uh, that kind of thing. So this on, on the cusp of moving towards neutral, as we continue to see these uh, some of these growth stocks and other leaders show good price action. So keep an eye on this. This might go to neutral uh, before too long if we get continued action like we saw today. So let's get into the tail of the tape. Before we do that, just briefly, I'm going to highlight myself here. And mainly what I want to highlight is my email. If you have any questions, comments, you want to know more about a stock, how we found a stock, why we're looking at a certain stock or sector, don't hesitate to email me, hunter at revereasset.com. You can always call 855-732-5932 uh, and you'll talk to Dan Stewart. Uh, you can email anybody here. Everybody's going to be happy and quick uh, in their responses. Merrill, Don, Dan, and Tim at revereasset.com. So let's get to the tail of the tape. And uh, we're going to move through this pretty quickly here so we can get to some of those best looking growth stocks uh, for you guys. So market state still correction. Headwinds remain the same. Uh, obviously, interest rates very much in focus and the Fed's policy very much in focus. And that's not going to change. Uh, that's just the nature of the markets here. Sentiment wise, put call ratio continues to just kind of live in this 0.9 to 1 ish range. We did see it move up to around 1.2 today, uh, but finished near the lows here, 0 0.91. VIX tagged almost 30 today, but came back as we saw the positive reversal, closed around 27.50. And fear greed actually slightly down, but still in the same area, 23, still an extreme fear reading. Uh, so bull case initiate and reclaim the 21 EMA. Uh, we are not doing that so far on the S&P. Tried to, that's failed, but we're still trying to put in a higher low here. As you can see, this is the S&P uh, on the right-hand side over here. Bear case, break the 21 EMA. We did that, but now we're trying to put in that higher low, trying to possibly make a run back at reclaiming that 21 EMA. So news-wise, tomorrow we do have the FOMC minutes, always something to pay attention to. Uh, the market typically has a reaction to that. Uh, that is tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern, I believe. So just something to watch and be aware of. 
What were we watching coming into today? 3740 to 3750, uh, as you can see over the course of these last three days, huge, 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 huge support level. And that held again today, even though it did not feel like it was going to this morning. It was pretty nasty action, especially with the way oils were getting crushed. But it did hold, and we did make a run back above 3800 today. So that's what we were watching. Resistance one, 3800 to 3815. Resistance two, 3825 to 30. And you can see support held. We got above R1 by the close, so above 3,800 to 38.15, and we got slightly above the R2, but basically closed right on 38.30. So action-wise, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up on a five-minute for us here. I'm going to pull the tail of the tape back up here too. So you can see we opened down 1.4%. We tried. We rally back up here. You can see to 37.75. We come all the way back down, retest these lows right here around 37.40 and proceed to move up right here at 12.25. We break out above that 37.75 level and continue to trend higher throughout the day. And when I say trend higher, I know I say that often when I'm talking about the action. That means for the most part, we're making higher lows and we're making higher highs. And that's what you see here, right? At each pullback, it was relatively contained and we continue to move higher. So trend up to 3,800 right here and then at 225 we pop above 3800 from 240 to 315 we run into some resistance at 3820 that's until about this time right here and then 325 we push above 3820 and close right near the highs of the day right around 3830 so uh ended up closing just a couple of points above where we closed on uh friday and just all this just to come back and close basically two points higher than where we were on Friday. So a big time positive reversal uh, led by growth and technology, like I said, but uh, S&P, very important. I talked about it last week. 3,800 is a massive, massive level. And it's really impressive and important that the S&P got back above that today. Now we want to see, can it hold it uh, as opposed to having a nasty gap down like this? So uh, low to high 3,742 to 3,832. Again, a pretty Pretty wide range, but something we've become accustomed to down here uh, with the S&P and with the indices. Notes wise, QQQ and the beaten down growth names lead. A lot of the growth names that were up big today are names that have been absolutely decimated or crushed over the last 6, 9, 12, 15 months. A lot of names that had RS scores in the 0 to 20 range or 1 to 20 range were the names that were up the most today. But uh, there are some of these names that look good, and we're about to look at them here in just a moment. <clears throat> uh, Performance-wise here again, S&P opened down 1.4, closed up 0 0.16, G6 up almost to 60.40, down a little over a third percent, protection down 0 0.15 today. Sector-wise, dollar making a really big move uh, today, very nicely green bonds. Uh, for the most part, green, mainly the treasuries, we saw a big move above the 50-day moving average for the first time in a while. We're going to look at that. Biotech, software, retail, home builders, and ARKK, <clears throat> excuse me, oils, metals and mining, agriculture, solar, defense stocks, and gold and miners having a tough day today. So no changes to the portfolio. Bottom line, gap down, strong positive reversal off of that 37.50 support. And now we are about 1% below the 21 EMA. As you can see, it's right there around 38.67, close today at 38.31, strong positive reversal. Uh, so that's the next big hurdle there. That's the next big moving average. And then you've got the 50-day, which is now below 4,000, another area to watch. So positive action today. Um, you know, we came back and retested that 37.40 to 37.50 area it held. And now we're... Uh, moving back up above 3,800 and we wanna see that hold. So we're gonna move through the indices quickly here. We touched on the S&P a pretty good bit. Poking its head above the ADMA, back above that 3,800 level. Now you want to see if that level can hold. Obviously today with the gap down, we sliced right through it, but we're back above it. Now again, just wanna watch this 3,800 level very, very closely on the S&P. Superbly important to the market in my opinion. Conversely, QQQ, well above the key level of 280 that we've talked about a good bit over the course of the last few weeks. So QQQ, big time relative strength, we talked about that. And look at the RS line starting to hook up here, obviously with the action today. Uh, but technology and growth really catching a bid today as we saw the commodities slash oil and 
uh, all that type of area that was benefiting from inflation really break down a decent bit today. And we also saw rates come off today, which no doubt helped growth in technology too. So QQQ well above the 280, back above the 80 EMA, just a tiny, tiny little bit below the 21 EMA here and uh, could very well be challenging it tomorrow morning. DIA week today, uh, as you can see, not quite back above the eight, uh, but right back into this 310 level. That's a big level for the Dow here. You want to see this get back above the ADMA, back above the 21. Uh, and for right now, the, the higher low pattern is holding on these major indices, right? So we have not gone back and made new lows, even though today at times it felt like we were just about to break wide open. We did not. So DIA hanging in there. Uh, even though it is has been a little bit weaker over the last week or two. NDY, same story, hanging in there, but still a little bit weaker right on the ADMA. You can see the RS line angling down here on mid caps, but the same pattern holds true on all the indices. Higher lows still intact as long as we can keep holding the lows of the last couple of days uh, slash last week. And IWM, same story here. Big level for IWM was to hold this 168 to 170 area. Obviously, we undercut that just like the S&P undercut 3,800, but by the end of the day, definitively back above the eight, definitively back above that 168 to 170 area. So small caps, QQQ, and uh, the S&P acting a little better than the Dow and mid caps for the time being, uh, but the higher low pattern is still intact across the board. So before we get to those growth stocks, let me briefly highlight here the 10-year uh, note. We talked about this. This 3% level was a very, very big level. You can see it was a big resistance spot here uh, and a big breakout spot here. But we have come right back down and sliced through that, as you can see here. And this is the first time the 10-year note has been de definitively below the 50 since back in here when this run really began uh, for the 10-year note and for rates in general. Uh, so somewhat a change in character, something to certainly pay attention to. Uh, here on the 10-year note. And then I also mentioned the dollar moving up sharply today, as you can see, up one and a half percent. This is a clean breakout on the dollar over uh, some very important highs. So 2807, 2821, those aren't just the highs for this year. They also are a big spot going all the way back to last year. So this 28 level, very important that the dollar uh, push past that. It's something you can't look past today. Uh, dollar making a strong move up, rates coming down. And we also had growth and technology benefiting. So let's get into some of those best looking growth start, best looking growth stocks in the market. Uh, and we're gonna run through them here. So GTLB, in my opinion, one of, if not the best looking stocks here off the bottom, you can see this stair stepper type of action, the RS line from this day here, basically angling at a nice angle up here, um, obviously, big volume or big price day today up about 9% with some solid volume. You can see some accumulation here as we've got above average volume too uh, on GTLB. This is a decent looking chart here. And you can see the main thing I wanna highlight is this did not make a new low in June along with the indices. And that's something that's very important on these stocks. If you're looking for growth stocks that are possibly building out of base, showing relative strength versus the indices, a good first criteria is did not make a new low in June. And there's a decent bit of them out there. So GTLB, one of my favorites, looking good, challenging the 60 area, not too far off from challenging the 6527 pivot either. Uh, but I do wanna show you on a lot of growth stocks, you had to be really quick this morning. And this is all the while that the S&P was down about one and a half to 2% here. A lot of growth stocks just absolutely got vertical off the open in the first 30, 45 minutes or so and never looked back. So GTLB, uh, just a good example of that. So GTLB, one of the top looking growth stocks in my opinion. <clears throat> Another one that we have talked about, Celsius up 13%, 14% nearly today. Major volume on this one, pushing through the 72.01 pivot here uh, and above the 200 day decisively. One of the strongest looking growth stocks and held up very well, again, did not make a new low in June. Not, and when I say new low, I mean new year to date low. That's what we're talking about. So Celsius not making a new year to date low, one of the better looking growth stocks. Uh, DOCN, another name, did not make a new low in June. And you can see up about 8% today, getting back above the 21 and the 50 and the eight. 
uh, holding this 40 level, turning that to a resist or a support area. Very important there, DOCN. CrowdStrike, also nice action today. You can see above the key moving averages, did not make a new low in June, stair stepping higher here as well as the indices have struggled and squandered. That is what we want to focus on. Names not making new lows, showing relative strength and stair stepping higher uh, as they continue to move up the right side potentially. A couple more here, SWAV, Shockwave Medical. Really nice action out of this. I know we've covered a lot of medical names, but this one has really nice earnings, great sales growth here as you can see, uh, and pushing above this 200 level today, nice action as it just kind of flagged above the ADMA and looks to continue to the upside here as well. And the last one is a China name, but it does bear mentioning because it is certainly one of the leading stocks in the market right now. Lee Auto with some absolutely massive volume on this move from 18 up to 40 over the course of the last two and a half to three months here. Uh, just a really, really incredible move with some major volume behind it. I know it is a China stock, but it is certainly acting very, very well. So six of the better looking growth names out there, in my opinion. Uh, add them to your watch list. I know there's other names too, like Roblox that had a big day today. Um, all kinds of names that you can, and if you if you have some that you think I should, I didn't mention or I'm not watching, send them to me and I'll happily take a look. So those are six that I think are really solid though. So let's move through the rest here. Google, uh, nice big up day right into the 50 day moving average. As you can see, Amazon also up about 4% today, along with Google, nearly up into that 50 day moving average, as you can see here. And then Meta, these were the three big tech names that really had the best days uh, out of all the big tech names. So all of these up about four and a half or four to five percent, as you can see here. Uh, we saw really nice reversals out of NVIDIA and AMD. Uh, these were down two percent or so out of the gate, but ended up finishing green. You can see NVIDIA up three right back up into this 150 level, which was a support area. And then AMD also finishes green after being red this morning up about 2%, but these had some nasty sell-offs. My point here is just pointing out that they did reverse red to green after it got down, even though these were ne these names were extended to the downside, got down and have a positive reversal and could give room for some more, for price to run further to the upside here. Uh, and a couple more, Ollie. This was one of the strongest names and has been showing relative strength for the last couple of months here, as you can see by that RS line, up big today, about 8%. Uh, similarly, DLTR having a nice day today, up about five and a half percent. Again, RS line continues to climb on this name. And just to show you what was really leading today, it's the risk on area ARKK and XBI. Uh, these are kind of what you're the risk on two of probably the best risk on metrics you can look at biotechs and Kathy Woods ETF, their ARKK. And I will say there are some growth stocks starting to pop up out there that have a similar look to ARKK. They're popping their head above the 50 as it's continued to come down and catch up uh, and the 200 day is still a decent bit above. So uh, ARKK, XBI, some of the leading areas in the market today. Some of the worst areas in the market, oil, XLE down 4% today, breaking those recent lows, breaking that big uh, support level of 70. XOP, oil and gas exploration ETF down about five and a half, breaking the 200 days. And these are just precipitous drops. Uh, from oil stocks. I mean, there's a lot of oil stocks that have borderline been cut in half in the over the course of the last, you know, three or four weeks. A lot of names that have had 25, 30, 35 percent declines, uh, you know, and just because it's a big company doesn't mean it's an exception. And, you know, Chevron's a good example of that. This thing has gone from 182 to 140 in a very short period of time. And some of the more speculative names like MTVR, um, they've had even worse drops, right? 67 to 43 here on MTDR. So oil stocks really having a tough go over the last couple of weeks. Also, we saw the food commodities continue their breakdown as well. I've touched on this a decent bit. Wheat down about 5% today. Corn also down about the same, 4 to 5%. And then soybeans, same thing here, down about 5%. So uh, these really broke down after showing relative strength for the first half of this year. Uh, certainly not showing relative strength anymore, at least for the time being. And on the same breath, we got these coal names here, AMR and Arch, that had showed great relative strength here, right? 
uh, over the last couple of weeks starting to give way to these are pretty big pullbacks 187 to 112 here on AMR and then Arch also very volatile uh, from 180 178 to 130 so uh, but both of these down about 10 percent today so the commodity names really having a tough go we also saw the defense stocks struggle today uh, RTX down about 4%. This is after they looked really good last week and showed some nice relative strength. Northrop Grumman also down 4 or 5%. Same, same situation after showing some nice relative strength last week. So these defense stocks can be very all over the place. A lot of uh, sharp moves up and down. And another area that can do the same thing, uh, solar. These were down, Enphase was down 7 or 8% today. Ended up staging a big time reversal to get back above the 21% and finished down only one and a half percent here. Uh, Sedge, same thing, was down six, seven percent at the lows, uh, and then comes back to finish down 1.8. So uh, another really volatile area. This was a, a one of the parts of the market that was weak today, but big time reversal closed at the highs. You don't, you, that's something you can't say about the defense stock. So Enphase and Sedge, although they had really bad days for the most part, ended up closing that gap and not having such a bad day after all, only down about one and a half to two percent on those names. So I know that was a pretty long video, but I hope the information was valuable. Uh, remember those growth stocks I covered today, GTLB, CELH, DOCN, uh, CrowdStrike, CRWD, Shockwave, SWAV, and then Lee Auto, LI. Those were the six tickers. Uh, add those to your watch list if you feel inclined, but I will see you guys on Thursday's Daily Market Insight video as well as the podcast uh, if, if I'm available for it this week, and I am out this Friday. but. You guys have a great week. I hope you all had a great 4th of July, and I will see you soon.